So here we are at Black Hat in the uh, vendor arena, and you know th there's just a plethora of technology out here. And I think that during this particular session, what I'd really like to talk about is is how to make maximize your investments and make better decisions in your capital investments. So. You know, some, some things to consider is, is how you make decisions typically is a lot more guessing than it is quantifiable data driven. And that's what really what I want to talk to you about. So, you know, the reason that you're here at Black Hat is because the real world is harsh. You know, every day in the media, there is incidences being reported, uh, big logo companies that have had disastrous breach incidences or had, uh, you know, catastrophic denial of service attacks. And, after these kinds of incidences, we, we on the sideline, we try to think about how do we, what can we do to prevent these from happening to us? And, and I think that one of the things that we need to also recognize is that technology, especially modern technologies, is part of that solution. Not the whole solution, but it is a part of that solution. Right? And so security technology decisions is something we need to consider. And so back uh, last year, there was this report that came out that talked about what are the barriers to enterprises adopting modern technologies? You know, we, we think of ourselves living in this fast-paced world of virtualization, you know, cloud, uh, constant delivery, and yet what we find as we're making important investment decisions is that decisions go very, very slowly. And so if you look at the, when I analyze this report and look at the reasons for why these decisions are happening so slow, are taking so much time is it's really all about information and having a confidence level that's high enough that you can make that decision and cross that cross that uh, over the needs right and so what I want to point out here is things like will it work in my environment is the performance level right am I right sizing the, the investment um, all of these can be derived through testing right and so that's really that the bulk of it is to overcome slow decision making by having a more disciplined approach for how to make decisions by using testing strategies as a way to do that. So, so now let's step back and see, well, how do people make decisions, right? And if you're like most, what you'll do is you'll read through data sheets, you'll uh, look at um, uh, analyst report, magic quadrants, I'm a marketing guy, I love magic quadrants, up and to the right, right? Um, oh, and then, as well as you're going to talk with trusted partners and other people in the industry to understand what were the kinds of experiences that they had, right? But my point of this is, is that this is just not, this is not a disciplined approach. This is anecdotal information that is valuable, but it's not the end all. And so, I'd like to, we'll take one particular parameter as a beginning point, as a, as a data point of why this just doesn't work. Let's consider performance. That's an easy one to be able to distinguish and something that many people care a lot about, right? And so, when we look at data sheets as an example, what is it that the data sheet tells us when it says performance? Most people don't believe it, but you at least need to understand what it means. And the traditional ways of doing that are these two RFC standards, RFC 2544, which is a, a technology that was developed back in 1999. Really, it was built for switching, and yet, we continue as an industry to use this as a standard for being able to articulate the value and performance in, a, in technologies that are content and context aware, right? And then next uh, standard is called RFC 3511, which is based around HTTP transporting um, large synthetic object sizes, really empty objects, like 32K objects. And so we think that, well, that's HTTP, that's an application. Well, in the modern world, it really is, and it's a transport layer for being able to add the value that you're really trying to get to, because the reality is, is that it's applications that drive our businesses today, and it's not packets. Right? So we need to consider, in your environment, you have critical applications and users being services inside of that, and the other portion of it is, is that it's very unique. There are no two networks that are the same. The, the usage patterns, the applications that are running on it are completely different on an individual basis, and that's at the root of why these decisions are individual and that they have to be, uh, you have to take the responsibility for that. So let me take a, a case study to give you an example of how this works, okay? 
So this was a, a large financial institution that was migrating from state firewalls to next generation firewalls, right? And this could be really any kind of technology. Um, and, and so they had a couple things that they were trying to do. One was narrow down to a single vendor. Um, they did the due diligence of the paper research and narrowed down to three particular vendors that they were considering. And what they also realized was that there was four very distinctive use cases inside their de environment, depending on the locality of where that firewall was going to be deployed. So this was office environment, their, their web interfaces, the partner portal, and their trading side of it. So we helped them, as they narrowed down to the three vendors, one interesting data point is that all the vendors advertised 10 gig next generation firewall capabilities as well. So we helped them conduct a head-to-head -head on site POC based on the workflows that they had in their environment. And one of the interesting data points to also capture in here is, is that the first thing we did was we ran an RFC 3511 baseline test to understand the, the sort of the max theoretical limits. And what you see is, is that vendors don't lie, they just report information, right? And, and so they, you can see any kind of difference in the biases of performance that, they, that, that was being shown in this example. But then when we applied real world traffic and applied security attacks into that environment, we can really understand the biases and the types of things that that vendor was trying to accomplish with that particular product and, and where it fits best. And this particular test was based around performance, so we also see that the security efficacy was not great in this particular test, right? Now, this took three days to be able to get the quantifiable data. Now, one of the interesting data points of this POC also was, was that the incumbent vendor that had been previously supplying firewalls did not get this particular contract, right? And that's important because it's very hard to um, move from one vendor to the next. So what's this all about? It's about test, okay? And without question, I think that we all learned in school that you know, testing is a fundamental element of, of building robust, secure environments, right? But what we need to understand, especially when we're talking about security testing, is, is that there's more to security testing than what most people think of. We, all companies, do these penetration tests, which are really vulnerability assessments of their perimeter, right? So they contract out to a, a provider, they come out uh, th three to four times a year, and they return a piece of paper that says, you're compliant, I've done the uh, penetration testing. But, but that's, Compliant doesn't mean secure. And so we also have to consider the other elements of security testing, which is the resiliency element of it, which is testing your technologies, your networks, and your people under the anticipated real world workloads under attack, right? And to understand how fast are they gonna bounce back, how well are they gonna detect, and how resilient are they in, in, in these kind of environments. Now, Today, what you find is that the largest companies, the Fortune 200, Fortune 300 companies, do a lot of this. But for the vast majority of the enterprises, they don't. And, and what we want to show you is, is that this is within reach for you to be able to do these kinds of things as well in order for you to make sure that you're buying the right technology, putting it to the right configuration to be able to build a robust network. So test, right? T-E-S-T. -E the four letter word in many enterprise IT departments. Right? Because previous history is, is that there's this strategy that's been taking place in the past that had to do with build your own or you know, do it yourself testing, which are trying to patch together a lot of, of uh, open source tools, writing scripts, spinning up VMs, never being able to get to scale and really not being able to do the sophisticated elements of the test. But today, in addition to Ixia, the modern technologies exist that are these complete testing environments to be able to test networks, people, and processes under full load, under attack. And most recently, we introduced a software-only product that makes it much more accessible for IT departments to be able to take control of this and add the discipline of security testing into their environments. So, the magic around all of this is inside of our product is called application threat intelligence. And what this is, is the libraries that we provide in our software and our hardware tools that can model real world applications you know, and also integrate security attacks into that realistic traffic mix in order to test technologies, networks, and people.
And we keep this current inside of our program by providing bi-week, bi-monthly updates. So every two weeks is a fresh update that keeps you current with new applications as well as new security attacks. So here's another case study. This was a, um, a United Healthcare, um, and David Myers came to RSA and gave a speech about what they, the practice that they do associated with when they're bringing in new technology. So they do custom POCs on site. And sort of the interesting thing that you gather off of what he had to say was one, many analysts, industry analysts report that gave poor marks, especially to newer technologies, turned out to outperform the, the technologies when they actually did, did the test themselves, which is, which is a really important parameter. And they talk about the positive impact of discounts. Now, everybody wants a discount, right? You and your personal lives spend a lot of time trying to make sure you optimize your investments for your cars, but what about in the business side with your IT, right? Because knowing is power, right? And then this bender bias, right? Very hard to overcome. Our, our C-suite people play golf and eat dinner with their C-suite people. How, how, do you, how do you hold them accountable? So, so here at, at the A10 booth at Black Hat, A10 is putting on a demonstration of how to be able to test DDoS defenses, in particular hardware appliances. So they're demonstrating a 160 gig DDoS uh, attack and how well it's able to mitigate against these attacks. So I see this as a, a good positive step as a platform that they're helping their potential customers to be able to test their environments as well as their, their products as well as to do a head-to-head -head, uh, comparison against competitor products as well. Okay. So, so here was here's another example of a case study that was done with uh, a service provider, they were going to implement an upstream DDoS scrubbing services. It was a major investment on DDoS appliances that they were going to put in. So we helped them once again put a POC together to be able to understand from the three primary vendors that they had narrowed down to and what kinds of attacks it was able to, de to detect and defend as well as what was important for them was how fast was the mitigation able to detect and turn on. And so. You can see from this table, sort of interesting quantifiable data rather than hoping that when the attack comes that you'll ha have a strategy to be able to defend it. So how you do these kinds of tests are our products are able to do what's called a two-arm test where it models the clients as well as the servers. And this is important because trying to build up a lab that has all of the high cost elements on the back end or the complexity of the front end is very complicated and the system can do that. The other kind of test, which is typically do done in like DOS environments when you're testing their whole infrastructure, is where our platform creates the client side only workloads and drives legitimate and malicious traffic into that particular environment to see how does it, how resilient is it, right? So there's many kinds of technologies that you can um, you can benefit from when you're about to adopt some very complex security technology by leveraging these kinds of things. And, and at the end of the day, it's not only that you're going to build a better network, but equally, it's all about money. You're gonna, you're gonna make money off of it by making the best decisions, being able to get the very best prices for the very best products that's for your particular unique need, and you know, and that that, and then as well as being able to thwart the you know terrible incidences that would be reported in the in the, in the in the trade rags as well. So, so we're over at booth 110. So come on by, and we can show you some more detailed demonstrations on what this is all about. But but thank you very much for uh, listening to this speech.